Hello everyone. In this video, we will cover the module Portfolio Mathematics for CFA Level 1 2025. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and share this video so that other candidates can also benefit from it. In the description box, you will find a link to join my telegram group. You can share your doubts there and I will make sure to solve them. Let's get going. So there are three learning outcome statements in this module. We'll cover them one by one. Calculate and interpret the expected value, variance, standard deviation, covariances and correlations of portfolio returns. The expected return on the portfolio is a weighted average of expected returns on the component securities. So you calculate the expected return on each of the components of the portfolio and then you take the weighted average of those expected returns. So that will become your expected return of portfolio. So let's say we have R1 to Rn assets with weights W1 to Wn. So you take the weighted average of their expected values. So that will be your expected value, expected return on portfolio. Similarly, the variance of the portfolio return sigma square RP is the expected value of deviations of the returns from the expected returns. When we are talking about two random variables, the covariance of two variables, covariance of Ri and Rj is the expected value of cross product of their deviations. The covariance between two random variables is the probability weighted average of the cross products of each random variable's deviation from its own expected value. This measure is the population covariance and its forward looking. So this covariance is the population covariance that means the true covariance. It is not calculated from the sample, it is the true covariance of the population and it is a forward looking concept. The sample covariance between two random variables Ri and Rj based on the past data when you are calculating the sample covariance you divide this by n minus 1. Let's discuss a portfolio of two assets. The assets have expect the returns of R1 and R2 with weights W1 and W2. So the variance of portfolio is the expected value of deviation of portfolio return from the expected portfolio return. Now let's say the portfolio return is the weighted average of both of these returns R1 and R2 whereas the expected return is given like this. So now W1 and W2 are constants. So the expected value of W times R1 is equal to W times expected value of R1. So this equation can be written as the expected value of W1 R1 plus W2 R2 minus W1 times expected value of R1 minus W2 times expected value of R2 squared. So this equation is simplified to W1 square times sigma square R1 plus W2 square times sigma square R2 plus W1 times W2 times covariance of R1 and R2. So whenever you are calculating the variance of a two asset portfolio, you should use this formula. This formula is generalized in this form. The covariance term, it captures how the co movements of returns affect aggregate portfolio variance. 
there are two essential observations first of all let's discuss the sign of covariance when the covariance of returns is negative it means that the return on one asset is above its expected value and the return on other asset tends to be below its expected value that means an inverse relationship between returns of the components a covariance of zero it means that the returns on the assets are unrelated the covariance of returns is positive when the returns on both the assets tend to be on the same side that is above or below their expected values at the same time it depicts a positive relationship between returns now for the same expected return a negative covariance reduces the portfolio risk this risk reduction is a diversification benefit the diversification benefit increases as the covariance decreases so as covariance decreases the overall portfolio risk reduces so greater diversification benefit now let's discuss the correlation correlation is simply covariance divided by the standard deviation of individual components so for a two asset portfolio of ri and rj the correlation of ri and rj is equal to covariance of ri and rj divided by standard deviation of ri times standard deviation of rj if two variables have a strong positive linear relation their correlation will be closer to plus 1 if two variables have a strong negative linear relation their correlation will be close to minus 1 and if two variables have a weak linear relation their correlation will be close to 0 calculate and interpret the covariance and correlation of portfolio returns using a joint probability function for returns the joint probability function of two random variables x and y denoted pxy gives the probability of joint occurrence of values of x and y for example px equals to 3 y equals to 2 is the probability that x equals 3 and y equals to 2 you should focus on this and that both of these conditions are true so that is the joint probability formula for computing the covariance between random variables ra and rb using the co probability the joint probability the formula is given here i'll explain this formula using an example soon the expected value of the product of uncorrelated random variables is simply the product of their expected values that means e expected value of x times y is equal to expected value of x times expected value of y only if x and y are uncorrelated there is no correlation between x and y so let's say we have an example where there are two assets a and b with returns r a and r b so these are different scenarios in the first scenario let's say the return of ra is 25% and return on asset b is 20% and the probability of this event happening is 0.2 so this here is the probability of scenarios similarly for scenario 2 with probability 0.5 the return on asset a is 12% and return on asset b is 16% similarly with probability 0.3 return on asset a is equal to 10% and return on asset b is equal to 10% we can calculate the expected return on r a as the probability weighted average of all these three returns 25% 12% and 10% so it comes at 14% similarly the expected return for asset b is 15% now let's calculate the covariance of asset a and asset b first of all let's see let's calculate the deviation for ra 
the first value is 25 percent 25 percent minus 14 percent that is your first deviation similarly we calculate all the deviations under these three scenarios for asset a and then for asset b then we take their cross product 25 minus 14 is equal to 11 20 minus 15 is equal to 5 and their cross product is 55 this column here gives the probability of all these three scenarios scenario 1 has a probability of 0 0.2 scenario 2 has a probability of 0 0.5 and scenario 3 has a probability of 0 0.3 then we take the weighted product probability times the product it's 11 0 0.20 times 55 11 0 0.5 times negative 2 negative 1 0 0.3 times 20 6. So the sum of all these three numbers is the covariance. Now if you check this formula, this will make sense now. You take a probability weighted average of all the deviations for asset A and asset B and then you add these terms. So that will be your covariance using the joint probability of asset A and asset B. Define shortfall risk, calculate the safety first ratio and identify an optimal portfolio using ROI's safety first criterion. Let's see first of all what is a shortfall risk. The shortfall risk is the risk that portfolio value or portfolio return will fall below some minimum acceptable level. Let's consider the case of a university endowment. The endowment has a target of real rate of return of 5%. So we add inflation to it. Let's say inflation is 4%. So the target is 9%. So any return below 9% is a shortfall risk for the endowment. The risk that the assets in a defined benefit plan will fall below plan liabilities is also an example of a shortfall risk. Now let's say suppose an investor views any return below the level of RL as unacceptable. So RL here is our target return. So the ROE's safety first criteria states that optimal portfolio minimizes the probability that the portfolio return will fall below the threshold level. Now if you check this is a normal distribution. The expected return of portfolio is given by the mean of the distribution and this here is your target return, the threshold level return. So what you want to do is you want to minimize this area. This area here is the probability that the portfolio return will be below this level. So you want to minimize this area of the tail. The investor's objective is to choose a portfolio that minimizes the probability of RT being less than RL. When portfolio returns are normally distributed, we can calculate probability of RT less than RL using the number of standard deviations that RL lies below the expected portfolio return. So let's say this is your expected return. And this is your threshold level return. So if this threshold level return is farther than your expected return, that means the probability of RP being less than RL will be minimum. So this is calculated using the safety first ratio. The safety first ratio is the difference of expected portfolio return with the target return and divided by the standard deviation of portfolio. Quantity expected return of portfolio minus the target return is the distance from the mean return to the shortfall level. Dividing this distance by standard deviation gives this distance in units of standard deviation. So when choosing among portfolios using ROI's criteria, we need to follow these two steps. 
first of all calculate each portfolio's safety first ratio then choose the portfolio with the highest ratio now there are two important points in managing financial risk that are value at risk and stress testing or scenario analysis the stress testing and scenario analysis it refers to a set of techniques for estimating losses in extremely unfavorable combinations of events or scenarios so the scenarios could be hypothetical scenario or the historical scenarios like like testing your portfolio in some hypothetical scenario to test how your portfolio works in this particular type of situation the value at risk is a money measure of the minimum value of losses expected over a specified time period at a given level of probability so this is the minimum loss that your portfolio can incur with the specified probability and a specified time period so this is it for this module i hope you liked the video please subscribe and share this video so that other candidates can also benefit from it i'll see you in the next video thank you very much